range assessment measures binocular motor fusion, specifically patients' ability to make a vergence movement while maintaining single vision. This test can provide information about the patient's binocular functions, especially control around the heterophoria. Throughout this test, the patient will need to make a convergence and divergence eye movement to continue seeing a single image through increasing prism strengths. The vertical prism fusion range can also be tested with a base up and a base down prism bar. For the purpose of this video, the fusional convergence and divergence will be demonstrated and therefore the horizontal amplitude of fusion range will be assessed. Fusional convergence can be measured using base out prisms and fusional divergence can be measured using base in prisms. Keep in mind you need to perform fusional divergence before fusional convergence and this is because a vergence movement leaves a residual tone and a convergence movement leaves a stronger residual tone which will contaminate the second measurement. Therefore start with fusional divergence then perform fusional convergence. The procedure involves the patient fixating on an accommodative target at one third of a metre or six metres while prisms of increasing strength are positioned in front of one eye. The prism causes a shift in the natural position of the eye and individuals with binocular single vision a conjugate movement and then recovery movement of the contralateral eye occurs. The break point occurs at the loss of binocular single vision and is often indicated by a patient experiencing diplopia. Make sure to hold the prism bar correctly in the right direction and angle, essentially keeping the centre of the prism in alignment to the visual axis. My name is Daenerys and I'm an orthoptist. Today we're going to be looking at the prism fusion range. This test involves assessing how well a person's eye can diverge and converge while maintaining single vision. This test can be done at either a third of a metre or at six metres. This test also involves using the instruments such as a prism bar, and a fixation target, such as 3 eyed Raven. Aria. Hi, come in. You yeah, sure? I'm Daenerys, your Please take a seat. So, I have a referral from your GP, Dr. John Snow. And he says you've been experiencing some double vision and headaches lately, particularly when reading. Do you know when this first started? <laughs> yes, it's quite annoying. Oh, that's not good. Well, today I'm going to try and figure out why, why you're experiencing these symptoms. I'd like to do some tests in your eyes, if that's okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the first test is going to involve measuring how much your eyes can converge and diverge while maintaining single vision. The orthoptist must observe eye movements to see when the patient objectively breaks, even though they may indicate break as they may confuse a blurry image with diplopia and some patients may not even be able to indicate when they see two images and generally these patients experience suppression at the break point. Therefore, the objective measure is the gold standard. So, what I'd like you to do is to focus on the beak of the three-eyed raven for me the whole time. Yeah, sure. And I'm just going to put this prism bar in front of your left eye and tell me when the beak becomes double. Yep. Is it single? Mm -hmm. Just keep it single. Still single? It's blurry now. It's blurry? Blur is fine, just as long as it's single. Yep. The patient continues to fuse the images with some ease as the orthoptist increases the strength of the prisms. At some point, the image becomes blurry and this is when the patient has met the limits of their relative fusional vergences. Relative fusional vergences is when the patient can maintain a clear image. Positive relative fusional vergences can be assessed with base out prisms and negative relative fusional vergences with base in prisms. However, since this assessment is focused on fusional vergences rather than relative fusional vergences, we can push through blur and determine when patient is seeing double then back to seeing single again. Still single? Mm -hmm. It's double. It's double. The patient has indicated break at 16 diopters. This is when the patient can no longer fuse the images together. The next prism strength is shown and if still cannot fuse images, go back to the previous one. However, if the patient can fuse the next one with some effort, then continue to push for more to get the full extent of their fusion range.
Can you try and make it single? No. Okay. Um, tell me when it's single again, please. It's single. Okay, thank you. The patient has indicated recovery at 14 diopters. This is when the patient can just fuse the images together. Normally, recovery point should be one or two prisms down from break point. Recovery point indicates strength of binocular functions, and this can be related to when a patient has broken down into a manifest and the time it takes the patient to recover and regain their binocular functions. We will now be measuring fusional convergence with the prism file base out. So now I'm going to test how well your eye converges while maintaining single vision. So I'm just going to get you to look at the beak again for me of the three-eyed raven. You sure? And keep it single the whole time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put the bar in front of your left eye. Okay, is it single, the beak? Mm -hmm. Okay, just keep it single. Still single? Mm -hmm. It's blurry. It's blurry? That's yep. okay. Just keep it single. Yep. Still single? It's double. It's double now? Patient has indicated the break at 20 diopters. Can you try and make it single? Mm, no. no. What about now? Is it single or double? Double. So double? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go back until it's single. So tell me it's single. Still double? Yep. Yeah. It's single. It's single? Patient indicates recovery at 5 diopters. Okay, Aria, from today's assessment, I found that your convergence rate range is a little reduced. So what this means is that the more your eyes converge, the more trouble you have doing tasks like reading and other near tasks. Mm -hmm. The more trouble you have keeping images single, basically. But that's okay. There are some exercises I can give you to help strengthen your convergence and to relieve your symptoms so you can read easily again. Thank you. The average values for prism fusional amplitudes are as follows. At near, which is one third of a metre, 15 prism diopters base in and 35 to 40 prism diopters base out. In the distance, which is at 6 metres, 5 to 7 prism diopters base in to 15 prism diopters base out. In the vertical plane, 3 prism diopters base up to 3 prism diopters base down. Aria's prism fusion range was recorded as minus 16 prism diopters, which was her break point when the base was positioned in, over 14 prism diopters, which was her recovery point, 2, donated by the arrow, plus 20 prism diopters for her break point when assessing her convergence amplitude, over plus 5 prism diopters, representing her recovery point when the prism was base out. At break, she experienced aplopia as recorded. We performed the prism fusion range at NIA because Aria is mainly having her symptoms at this distance. From Aria's results and in comparison to the average values, we can see that the divergence values for break and recovery falls into the average range. However, her convergence values are low, especially her recovery point, which is supposed to be one or two prisms down from break point. She recovers 15 prism diopters later after break point, and this means that Aria most likely has convergence insufficiency as she's clearly having trouble controlling her deviation with accompanying symptoms she presents with. The clinical purpose of this test is to learn about a patient's ability to maintain comfortable binocular single vision and ultimately assist you in diagnosis and management. However, this test cannot measure the fusion range of cyclotorsion and cannot be performed on a patient with suppression Fixation talk. <laughs> Do we then? Oh, wait, question. <laughs> yes, <sorry. laughs> Okay. Oh, you want to talk? <laughs> okay. So you're going to put this prism bar in front of your left eye. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I want you to. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so there. 
Yeah. Okay.